be in this place today. I got the word of Yahweh to bring forth fruit. Some thirty fold, some a hundred fold, and some sixty fold. So we bless you for your spirit being here today. For the Lord is ruling in our hearts and being healed in our heart and our mind to you today. Bless Yahweh, oh my soul, and all of that is within me. Bless Yahweh, oh my name. Yahweh Almighty is um, so awesome. He takes the little things or the abased things to confound the wise. Somebody said I will not make it remember the song, but I'm still holding on. The enemy said that you wouldn't make it, you know. He sent out a word against you that you what? Wouldn't make it. That's why the word says every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, what you must do? Thou shalt condemn. In other words, he said, condemn that town. And he said that we must bring every thought, every imagination cast down that exalted itself above the knowledge or above the knowing or above the word of Yahweh. He said you must bring it what? into captivity. And how do we bring it into captivity? Like uh, Sister Joan said, by applying the word. Hallelujah. Prophecy, they can what? Look what was they happen to prophecy. What happened to town? You can see, you can vanish away. The only thing that will stand forever is what the devil do not want us to have, and that is the word of Yahweh. According to Matthew chapter uh, 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 13 verse 35, and Luke, uh, uh, Mark alluded to the fact, and Luke alluded to the fact, that heaven and earth, or the heaven that you see, and the earth that you see, they will pass away. John said, I see a new heaven and a new earth coming down. But the word, or the teos, as the Greek would call it, or the Tanakh, what the Hebrew will call it, will stand forever. Mm -hmm. So I bless you, I remember that. But I think, Sister Jordan, that's why he don't want you to hear it. That's why I stand up from here and I say, no, I when the word come on, the spirit of lethargy comes on. Because the devil wants you to go to sleep. Because he knows the only thing that you can combat him with is the word. That's the only thing that can cause him to what? Sleep. That's the only thing that can defeat him. Mm -hmm. You can sing and the devil singing with you. Why? He's in charge of praise and worship. Yahweh had him in charge of praise and worship. So he sing right along with you. But when you begin to speak the word, he ain't going to speak that. Why? Because he knows that's what? That's the only weapon what destroys me. Why do you think there's so much confusion when it comes to the word? Why do you think you have denominations like pastor talk about? The nomination is there to confuse. They are what different languages. And if you read in the Bereshit or in the Genesis uh, 11 account, when Yahweh began to confuse the people, what he did? He gave different language. And what different language or different speech is being uttered, the people what? wouldn't understand. So if you want to confuse the man, just change the language. And that's what denominations are all about. A different teaching or different doctrine based upon what? Man's revelation. And we're going to get into that just a little bit today. Thank you very much, Sister Lisa. For the past two weeks, this may be the third week, we are dealing with a topic. We are dealing with a topic, preparing or getting ready a people and a place for the name or getting a nation ready for the name. The Hebrew word for name is Hashem, the authority of Yahweh or a memorial of Yahweh. And the coming, the name and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Messiah. Yahweh said to me that these islands are the glory of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They are the glory of the Caribbean. David said that they are the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of what? The great king. Yes. Natural Israel, we always say if you don't understand the pattern 
There's no way you'll be able to make that suit or to make that dress. The natural Israel is the shadow or they are the schoolmaster. They are the image of something to come. They are the pattern, the blueprint, the design, the model, etc., etc., etc. They were chosen by Yahweh Almighty to be a model or to be a demo. We know what a demo is, eh? Hmm? Yes. Yeah, to be a demo or to be, we get the word demonstration from that word demo. And artists do not need to come before a, 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 a record company to show their demo. All they need to do is send a pre-recording. And in this age of so much technology, there's so much ways that they can what? Send that demo. They can send it by YouTube and they can watch it on YouTube. Um, they can send it by uh, a video, video or audio they can send it by. But it's a demo of that artist, that song that they want you what to see or to hear. Well, natural Israel is a demo or a demonstration of the kingdom that Yahweh wants to set up in this earth. Hallelujah. That's why when we pray, when they were asked to pray, they said, when you pray, pray that what? My kingdom come or my system come to earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So natural Israel, we cannot deny the fact that they were chosen or they were sanctified or they were set apart by Yahweh Almighty to be that example. Hallelujah. And I praise Yahweh for them. I don't know about you. I praise Yahweh. Say, how could they hear without a what? Preacher. How would we know Yahweh without the kingdom what? of Israel? They were the ones that Yahweh Almighty sanctified. Now sanctified, we get that mixed up. We look at sanctify as being what? Sinless. Sanctify got nothing to do with sinless. Sanctify means that Yahweh called you and said, I've set you apart just for my ears. Because uh, there ain't none righteous, no, not one. Uh, only him can sanctify. We can't even sanctify ourselves. The sanctification must come through the power of the word, the word of Yahweh. It must be sanctified. The only thing that can sanctify us is what? The word. The blood of Yeshua is there to save you and to cleanse you and to wash you when you sin. That's the purpose of the blood. But the word is there. It's to bring you into righteous That's why we need the preachers. That's why we need the teachers. To teach us what? The word. Rabbi teaches how we ought to pray. Or Rabbi only teach me how I ought to pray. Oh master, you can pick choose and refuse whatever word you want. The English vocabulary is what so large. So you can pick and choose. So natural Israel was that demonstration that Yahweh used to display. Another word for display is to exhibit. Do you know what an exhibition is all about? It's to show off my artistic skills. Hallelujah. So the natural kingdom was there to show forth the artistic skill or it was there to show forth the glory in a kingdom, hmm? the glory in that kingdom, or the splendor in that kingdom called Israel. Yeah. To be an example or to be a prototype in the earth, and listen carefully to this one, there to be that prototype or that model or that pattern or that blueprint in the earth for all, all nations. Hallelujah. For all nations. Like we always use our pastor. He's the prophet to what? To this nation. To make this nation and nations who would listen to him. That's how Yahweh set up his kingdom. He anoints a man like he anointed the, the, the Levitical priesthood so that the little Levitical priesthood will be the model when shall it come for all nations who will become priests. They will have already had what? The example or the teacher or the shadow to show us or to direct us into that path of priesthood. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're there to demonstrate the power. Listen, Leo, Leo. Listen carefully as we lay this foundation. They are there 
to demonstrate the power and the ability of Yahweh, the glory of the image that Yahweh created, made, remember he made it mine in his what? In his own image and after what? His likeness. Well, Yahweh don't only have a man that he created, because in the better sheet or in the origins or in the Genesis, he created what? A man for his glory. Hallelujah. But then he went a little, because everything with Yahweh is what? Progression. Higher heights and deeper depths. He bring you into one place to take you what? Into a higher place. So he created a man called Adam. And in Adam, he what? Places his glory. He places his image and he places his likeness. In Adam, he places an ability that no man today has today. So he began to progress. And he told a man by the name of Abraham that I'm going to give you a nation. And this nation that I'm going to give you, you cannot number because how great it will be. Hallelujah. And that nation is the nation, the nation called it uh, Israel. And they are the image after the likeness of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. They are heaven born to earth. Hallelujah. That is the system that Yahweh wants to bring to earth. Not the Catholic system. No. Not the Anglican system. No. But the Hebrew system Come is what he wants to bring to us. Because number one, he ain't no Bahamian, you know. No. I don't know if you know that, but he ain't no Bahamian. No. He may like Tom Silas, like I be like it. I believe he like it because he created the count. Hey. But he ain't no Bahamian. He is a what? A Hebrew. And we're going to get into that more. Anytime you want to see a glory of a nation, only those who born in that nation can what? Bring forth that glory in that nation. That's how we go. Huh? Bermuda, Bermuda can't bring forth junk to know like Bahamians. No. Only Bahamians can do that. No. So the kingdom sister Sanika, if you want to see the prototype or the image of the kingdom of Yahweh in earth, you got to go back to those Hebrew boys. Yes. yes. Because they are the ones who got his culture. Yes. 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 That's right. That's it. The Holy Spirit asked me on yesterday, how many books in the Holy Scripture were written by Hebrews? And I said, whoa, that's a question he asked with me. I never studied it. He said, let me tell you before you study it. 99.99, he said, I used a little Murray on you today. 99.99% of the Scripture was written by Hebrews. Hebrews. And he flashed into my face the book of Ruth. So I said, oh, Ruth was a mobile. He said, it is a mobile. But if you study, it will tell you that the book of Ruth was not written by Ruth, although it's named after Ruth. That is written by a Hebrew. Then I studied, what about Luke? And if you study, you'll find out that Luke was a Hebrew. So I said, well, my story looks like most of them written or all written by those boys. Eh? He said, leave it to 99.9%. He said, leave it to 99. That's how important the Hebrew culture is to you and I. That 99.99% of the scriptures, they're not written by Gentiles nation. They're written by Hebrew men and Hebrew women. One book uh, was written, I think. Uh, they say uh, they alluded the fact that maybe Samuel wrote the book, wrote the book uh, 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 of Ruth. Mm -hmm. They were saying that Luke was a Gentile, but when they studied, they said Luke, Luke was a what? Jew. Hebrew. Yes, a Jew. You could use that yeah, to be. Okay. Yes, or Jew. Yeah. He was a Jew. Now, I say that to say this. You know why Satan want to give us a mixture of denomination? Because each denomination has their own culture embedded in their yes. religion. Uh -huh. yes. mm? I wonder if you see the subtlety of the enemy that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go into it. So Yahweh used a likeness or a kingdom to be an image and a likeness after the kingdom that is in heaven. Yahweh not only that. Yahweh is so awesome. Sister Joan, you know what he did? He wanted to erect a temple. 
And this temple that he erected was, all, was a temple that what? It's in heaven. So he tell Moses, this is how I want you to build this temple, and this is the furniture that I want you to build this temple. And if you look at the furniture that is in uh, uh, the Hebrew, that is in the Hebrew temple, those furniture, excluding the burnt offering altar, and excluding the lamp, the gold, and the bronze lava bowl, every other piece of those furniture still exists in heaven today. They still, so that replica of that demo of that model that Yahweh told Moses to build was a demonstration of what was in heaven. And everything that Yahweh wants us to do it is a kingdom, his kingdom that he wants to set up here in earth. Now let's turn to Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28. You'll find uh, this is Proverbs, uh, the King Solomon, and he got this scripture out of the Torah, the five book of Moses, he got this from Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 14. That's where he got, he was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 19 and 14, but we're going to turn to Proverbs 22 and 28. Remove not, or do not move, or do not Destroy the ancient landmark. Or remove, not, some version will say, the property line. Another version will say, do not move the boundary line. Don't move it, Sister Beryl. The boundary line which thy fathers, some translators will say, which your ancestors have set. Now this ain't coming and I didn't read it from Deuteronomy for a purpose. I read it from another Hebrew boy who agreed or said amen to what is written in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 19 and 14. And he is telling them, don't touch those ancient landmarks which your father or your ancestors have set or which they erected or which they have established. Don't move it. I want to give you a little bit of information concerning what a landmark was at that time. Well, you know landmark in our days are what? Different. They are, we are fence. We have what? Walls. They are, uh, states. yes, states. They, these are things. We have uh, improved upon it. And because this ancient landmark was so easily to, rem to be removed, a curse was attached to anybody who removed those ancient landmarks. Let me write what I have here. Landmarks were made by placing small piles of stones around the owner's property. Just small piles of stone around the property. Because these stones were so easily moved by this honest man, Yahweh Almighty placed a curse upon it. And you'll find that in Deuteronomy 27 and, and 17. Cursed, listen to it now. When ancient landmarks are moved, listen to what Yahweh say, Minister Lord, take place when you remove ancient landmarks. Cursed be he that remove it his neighbor's landmark. Now you know we got plenty of people who like thief landmark, eh? And you know how they do it. I like to use the word thief. thief. I can say there for a thief. Huh? They will squat on your property. And they know the law say once you sit on that property for what, 20 years or so? 12 days. Are they making it easy to stay? You can what? Become that owner. Yes. So they would watch. They would clean it up with the intention that they got what? To take that property. Yes. That's what the enemy does. He watches and he looks and he goes about the word, say, as a royal lion seeking whom he what? May devour. According to Job chapter 24, verse 1, you know what Job said? That the wicked, they're going about, I'm rephrasing it, seeing how they could steal 
their own as landmark. That's what a wicked heart does. And that's what the devil do. He look around in the heart of men and he strategize. How can I get them to remove the word of Yahweh out of their lives? My, 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 now this landmark that I'm talking about, I use the natural, like I use the natural Israel to show forth what your spiritual enemy is doing to you. Because you can't see your enemy. Because he's the one, he's the spirit. Yes. That's why I always say you ain't fighting flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Let me know, let you know that now. You are fighting someone much stronger than you yes. across the planet. Yes. He got more power than you. Yes. He is what is known as an archangel. Yes. So I want to warn you, my brother. But they are mighty through Elohim. They have the ability to even break asunder imagination. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And every high thing that exalts it. And we know those things that exalt and uh, promotes itself above the knowledge. It only can be what men used by Satan. That's how we get the domination as pretty as it looks. Let me tell you, it ain't pretty, yeah? Because the only thing it did was separated the ecclesia of Yahweh. Yeah. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. I am of Cephas. I am a Baptist. I am a Methodist. I am a Pentecostal. Paul said, did Paul Cephas die for you? Did the Baptist clergy die for you? Did the Vatican die for you? So who do you promote? The word of Yahweh. And that don't have no denomination on it. That is for whosoever will, let him die. Now let's turn to John chapter 4 and verse 22. Now what it was with the ancient landmark, this is what Yahweh said, this is the continued generation of Deuteronomy 27 and 17. Cursed be he that removed his neighbor's landmark. And this is what he said, and all the people shall say, Amen. In other words, you sign the contract. The contract is what? It is signed. My father used to say, uh, all I need is the word. That's all my father, that's all, they were men of what? Integrity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today you need three and four lawyers when you buy a piece of property now. You better get three or four, and if you ain't got three or four, I better tell you. You will find out that that property sooner or later, that that lawyer didn't get some of the information. And about 20 years, they come and tell you, this property belongs to Sister Brown. You got to come off. Why do you think some people get three and four lawyers? Make sure if lawyer one miss it, lawyer two ain't gonna miss it. That's how crooked the world system is. When my father was alive, all they needed was a handshake, or yes, I'll do it. Ah, but we have walked away from the eternal covenant of Yahweh, where a man words don't value even the lawyer words in value that they give. I don't know if you believe it. I believe it. Ah, but the lawyer, you know it. yeah, you know it. Uh huh. They tell you I to win the truth. Ah, uh, they will tell you what a lawyer the profession is based upon lies. To win a case, that's all it's about. To fabricate lies. Why do we got so much lies, politician? Yeah. A bunch of whole assembly full of liars. Mm. If anybody can cover truth, it is a lawyer. My, my, my. Huh? So now Yahweh is saying, if you want to sign this contract with me, just tell me, amen. And the word said, and all the people that want you to pay close attention to all the people, because we're going someplace with this, and all the people shall say, Amen. Meaning, it is so, so let it be. In other words, if I remove my uh, neighbor's landmark, let the curse fall on me. That is what you're saying. And most of the time, we will just read, when the lawyers bring us, we want that that loan so bad. When they bring us that paper, we only sign. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, 
you signing away things that you don't even know exist. Because we what? Do not study. That's why the word says study to show yourself approved. Now, John chapter 4 and 22 says, Ye worship, ye know not what. Remember now we talk about denomination. Pastor brought it up and this is what it's all about. We talk about, about denomination. Or, who is this you were talking to? A Samaritan woman. He is saying, you Samaritans worship, ye know not what. Or in other words, you do not understand the one that you worship. You are worshiping an Elohim that you do not have understanding or knowledge of. Or you have you Samaritans, now remember he's talking to a Samaritan woman, you Samaritan have lost your way. You've lost it. You've removed the ancient landmark. And we're going to prove it how they did it. Or you Samaritans, you are being what? Misled. You've gone astray. You've wandered away from the laws of Yahweh Almighty. How did they do it? How did the Samaritan? See, sometimes we just read the word and we just read it and we just spiritualize it. But there's no historical fact based upon what we are saying. When Yeshua was talking to that Samaritan woman, now you know Samaria was what? A tribe of Israel. Yes, yeah, she was a tribe of Israel. But what took place when King Solomon began to build up all those altars to other gods because of his wives, Yahweh said, I'm going to divide this kingdom. And anytime you begin to divide something, you make it what? Smaller and smaller or weaker and weaker. Anytime Yahweh Almighty wants to do something, he begins to, well, he began to what, divide the language. On the day of Pentecost, what? They had what? One language. It was a division. It was one language. Now, so what Yahweh did, he began to divide the kingdom into two. Ten of the kingdoms were ruled by Jeroboam. And Jeroboam, keep it in mind, was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. And Samaria was the capital of those ten tribes that Je King Jeroboam was king over. And the tribe of Judah, we got to get this if we're going to understand the scripture for what I'm about to, to, to share with you today. The tribe of Judah stayed with King Solomon. Hence we have a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Now, an American can go against a German territory and America can come up what? Victorious. But a kingdom, if America began to fight America, she cannot stand. America will what? Destroy herself. And that is what Yeshua said. When a kingdom is divided, that kingdom or that baby coming down. And that is what took place with the nation of Israel. Yahweh said, when you begin to transgress my law, I am going to what? These are some of the things that he told Israel. I'm going to bring you into captivity. You become servants and no longer head of state. And another thing that I'll do to you, I'll begin to take away your kingdom power away from you. Hmm? When you begin to what? Disobey my word or my instruction or my doctrines or my teaching or my laws. My governmental, my governmental institution. So now here it is. He is saying, do you know what Jeroboam did when he, when he, when he took over? Now watch what Jeroboam did that, that nigga was so big. He's saying he's taking away the kingdom from Solomon because Solomon uh, had too many wives and, he, and he's committing idolatry. Okay? But then watch what Jeroboam did. If you study the kings of Israel, most of the kings of Israel were wicked. Most of them. If you study the, the kings of Judah, most of the kings of Judah was what? They were good. I'm not saying all, oh, but most of them were good. Why? Because the branch that they came from. Paul said, if the lump is holy, if the lump is holy, then the whole bread loaf will be holy. And Yahweh had to keep that, that side separated. 
because he had to bring a glory that will come through the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. He had to keep it holy because Shiloh will come the through the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Okay? So now here it is. This is what Yeshua was telling that woman. Jeroboam, one of your kingdom, and this is what Yahweh. And if you read the, the, the book of Chronicles, every time that Yahweh began to talk to a king, he would say, and they went after the laws or the instruction of Jeroboam their king. Although Jeroboam was already dead. Mm -hmm. Because Jeroboam was the one that the word said caused Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. And what Jeroboam did, we know what day the, the Feast of Tabernacles take place, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. It's in the what? Seven months. But you know what that boy did? He put it in the eight months. Mm -hmm. Huh? That is what you call an abomination. That is what it means. Do not remove the ancient Lama. Your forefathers already told you. I said, I am the Yahweh your Elohim, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt. I call Moses my servant. I've given my law. Don't go against my law. But they did it anyhow. Eh? So hence we have the tribe of Israel becoming a lost tribe. And the more you study this tribe called Israel, you'll find out that that was the tribe. When the Assyrians came in, they dwelled in the land, Minnesota, or Samaria, which is the capital of Israel. They dwell in that land. They bring in all of their men and, their, and all of their culture into the land of what? Samaria, which was the capital of Israel. Those ten tribes. Do you know when Nassau fall? All the other islands for yes. Satan so smart. Let me show you how smart he is, or how intelligent he is. He knows, and this is why I bless Yahweh so much. If a hurricane come and that destroy New Providence, which is our stay of bread, all of the other islands will be what affected. Yes. So Satan don't hit you any place. No. He fights and he has strategy and he hits you from your strong point. Yeah, yeah. That's why Yeshua said, in order to bind up a strong mind, you got, in order to go in his house, you got to bind him up good. In other words, you got to know where his strong places are. That's what Yeshua will tell you. We just read the surface of the word. But there's no historical fact behind why Yeshua. Do you know you could write a book of that thing, John 4 and 22? You could write a book. Right. Well, it's so loaded. But we do not study. Study means that you got to go and do what? Research. Yeah. Not just read. Study don't mean read it. Study means what? To research the scripture. Now he said, you lost woman. You all done walk away from my laws a long time. And you know who kept my laws alive? That tribe called Judah. The, so he said to him, you worship what you know not what. Mm -hmm. You've gone astray. We Jews, this is what he said, we Jews, in, in, in your scripture say we? Uh, and it say we? So Yeshua was alluding to the fact that he's the what? That he's a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I talk about how 99.9 .9 of the scriptures is written by who? Jews. You know why? It's written by Jews. Because the word was given by a Jew. When Paul and Peter and all those boys were inspired, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Habakkuk, when all those boys were inspired, they were inspired by a Jew to write the word. That's why Yahweh had to call a Jew. Because the word Jew know a Jew. Hallelujah. And they understood what that Jew Elohim was saying to them. Hallelujah. Huh? So you got to become a Jew if you want to be a part of the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, let of the Jews. But Christendom have caused us to walk away from the laws of Yahweh Elohim. That is why we are not seeing the manifested power of Yahweh Hallelujah. in situations. Hallelujah. He said, we, we or we Jews, we know or we understand what we are worshiping. Because salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. Or salvation 
will come to the whole entire world because of a Jew man. Bye, bye, bye. Not a Greek. Okay. Uh, because to be the Greek, we have to what? Learn Greek. But, when I'm not talking language, we have to learn Greek culture. But salvation, or the Greek word is soterias. Deliverance will come to the whole world because of a Jew. That is why it's so important that we embrace our Jewish heritage. Now, the pattern has been established. The pattern has already been established by the Jews. It was established over most of the how long? About 2,000 years plus. 